Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Thursday, August 22nd. I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined by the magnificent Caitlin Moynihan. Good with your some Thank you. Wow. Thank Hi, everybody. You. Thank you. <laughs> we also have a magnificent guest oh with us God. today. We have the Tony nominated star and Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning hey. star of Ain't Too Proud, Ephraim Sykes is here, everybody. Very exciting. We Big love Big fan. Ephraim He's Sykes. fantastic. We, we love his, show. Remember his um, Hairspray Live, his CB? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that, Ain't Too Proud, so much more. But first, let's talk about today's top five. Slava is coming back to Broadway. Okay, so here's what I remember about <laughs> Slava Snow Show. I saw this show on Broadway 10, 11, yeah, 12, say, yeah, 30 I've years ago. I don't know. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Never I remember that, no. sitting there and just having like white, they, they literally make the whole theater a snowstorm. <laughs> it is exactly what they say it is, but it's not wet. Don't worry. No. Um, the theatrical spectac spectacular. I'm going to call yes. it a spectacular spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. Slava Snow yeah. Show is booked a holiday return at the Stephen Sondheim Theater because Stephen Sondheim is, of course, a huge fan of this show. And snow. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, yes. Beautiful, the Carol King musical is closing there, and then Slava is coming in. It was created and staged by acclaimed Russian clown Slava Polonin, I believe is his name. Yeah. Um, and it's coming back. It's a cast of 10, creating a series of breathtaking stage images, culminating in a joyous, swirling snowstorm that swirls across the stage, filling the theater and engulfing the audience, and you'll remember it for 30 plus years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, it starts performances November 11th, 2019, and opens November 13th, and will continue through January 5th. You know, it usually doesn't snow hard in New York until January, so this is a right. pre, this is an early get you ready kind of thing. That's right. And Johnny might be coming to the stage. Yes, so I'm, You're super jazzed I'm for this. super excited about this as the resident Stephen King buff in the, the office around here. All right, so Stephen King is a hot commodity right now, and it, apparently that's translating to the stage as well. Tony winner Simon Stevens, as well as Tony winner Evo Van Hova, are collaborating on a stage adaptation of Stephen King's 1977 horror novel, The Shining. So this is the one with Danny. He's got, you know, red rum. He's got The Shining. Creepy twins. Yes, twins. The creepy twins. Well, that's not in the book. Um, but anyway. Anyway, um, this follows Jack Torrance. He's an alcoholic. He's a writer. He takes care of this hotel, and when it, in its off season, there's hauntings. It's like a big haunted house story. Um, he his son has psychic abilities. All of this. Uh, Can I ask you something though, because I know you are a Stephen King. I truly, yeah, truly, no, truly fanatic. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. even went to see the new Pet Cemetery on opening night. Although mm -hmm. I have to say, you're making a face. I didn't look like up the cemetery. trailer where they combine Pet Cemetery with cats. <laughs> Oh, I have they not watched this. Oh, so you have funny. to. They, yeah. they combined the so trailers funny. for Cats and Pet Summit. You have oh, to watch free? this. I haven't yet. I put no, it in yeah. Slack, Ryan. I'm sorry. It's I'm so sorry. Funny. I was working. <laughs> anyway, it is amazing. I can't But wait. I want to ask you as a true, I only know the yeah. movie, The okay. Shining, the original, yeah. Yeah. Jack Nicholson and Shane right. Duvall. What's, what's different about the book? Uh, I'm, there, are a lot, there are a lot of differences. Okay. Stephen King notoriously hates the movie version. Okay. He, oh. uh, yes, he and Kubrick did not get along. Also, he the, the book ends very differently than the movie does. Okay, There's an I have explosion heard that in the book, whereas okay. Jack doesn't just freeze outside in the book. So, oh, um, interesting. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if this is Yeah, which different. one they, yeah, which ha if they combine the two. I, cool. I'm very interested. But the, the details are this will probably premiere in London's West End first before coming to Broadway. Um, of course, Ivo Van Hova will soon be represented on Broadway with West Side Story. Simon Stevens is currently represented on Broadway with Seawall Life. We don't know anything else, no casting, none of that. But I'm really looking forward to it. Could yeah. Brian Cranston be in it? The star of Net uh, Evo's uh, 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 Evo Net Van Hova's network. I'm just probably. throwing it out yeah, there. Absolutely, absolutely. Dream casting. I mean, Love a Tony it. winner writing. And from sure. Sykes could be in it. And from <laughs> Sykes, absolutely. <I> <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, yes. And we found out who is going to be taking Margaritaville across the country. So there was this show called Escape from Margaritaville. Remember, it was a jukebox musical. It was. I loved it. I had a blast. I thought it was so yeah. much fun. I had the biggest margarita in my life in that theater. It was, it was delicious. In the spirit. Jimmy Buffett came yes. here. He yeah, was so he was lovely. walking around barefoot. It didn't have a long yeah. life on Broadway, no. which is what, which you know, people. I don't know. It's sometimes, a, sometimes people. Some people are resistant to fun, you know, and I think that we're not. 
we, we like fun. fun. So yeah. hopefully the whole nation it actually started as a tour and then it came to it Broadway. It did, yes. But it yeah. is going back on the road as a national tour. Mm -hmm. And two newcomers have been cast uh, as the leads, Tully and Rachel, the romantic leads. Chris Clark and Sarah Henriksen. Yes. So congratulations, yes. yeah. Chris and Sarah. They'll be joined by Shelley Lynn Walsh as Tammy, Peter Michael Jordan as Brick, Rachel Lynn Forbes, Patrick Hogan, and Matthew James Sherrod are the other principals. It will all kick off at the Providence Performing Arts Center in Providence, Rhode Island on September 29th, and it will go to 35 cities. So have fun. Get a margarita. Yeah, absolutely. And we got some more casting about City Center's encore season. It's pretty good. Yes. So uh, good. I, incredible people are involved in this. So we've heard about the shows that are really coming this season, but now we have the initial casting. Let's take them one by one here. So first, you have Mac and Mabel will be playing February 19th through the 23rd, and that will be Tony nominee Douglas Sills and Alexandra Shosha. Well, she was yeah. here she for was Live at Five because she I because they she did they did a whole chunk of it in that Hey Look Me Over yes they did right. like twenty so they, minutes of it and right. I was and she was amazing and when she, she was, was here I was gushing about hopefully they'll get to do it again so yeah. congratulations and so she gets to and do it Douglas again Sills, perfect yeah amazing and as Paul mentioned they've previously done they will be playing uh, Max uh, Mar Mac Senate and comedian Mabel Normand in that show uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell and mm -hmm. Kate Baldwin are headlining Love Life that'll be playing March 18th through the 22nd they will star as Sam and Susan Cooper respectively that is directed by Tony winner Victoria Clark is directing what? that which is so Vicky exciting Clark. absolutely right and it will be choreographed by Joanne Hunter and finally Camille A. Brown who is just the, the busiest person yeah. on Broadway Way right now, she's joined the creative team of the previously announced uh, Thoroughly Modern <gasps> Millie. Which That's is cool. I'm very excited. I haven't about seen this. her do that period yet. No, I mean, exactly. No. This yeah, will so be a whole new era for Camille Brown. And who's playing Millie? Ashley Remind Park, us, guys. Ashley Park. Ashley Park is, is in everything. She is crazy. And we're not yeah. complaining. We're no, good with that. No, absolutely. Give her all the work. Of course, uh, Lear, Lear de Bonsonette will direct this production, and it features a new adapted script by Lauren Yee. Very what? excited for this. Yeah. That'll different. be May 6th through the 10th. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very excited to see. Is there any Time's Up stuff in Millie? I, th I mean, uh, yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah I wonder if Kudish, we saw you in that. Yeah, that's uh, right. Oh, I wonder. I'm I don't know. I'm just curious about see. what that means. And yeah. that Love Life show, I don't know that show. That's a I don't Kurt Vile, yeah. Alan J. Lerner show. And apparently right. it's about a married couple that don't age over like 160 years. Oh. It was like one of the first concept musicals on Broadway. Right, okay. So, right. It's, so yeah. So anyway, what a great encore time. season. Can't wait. And one of our stage faves just has a new off-Broadway gig. Hey, Michael Benjamin Washington, we're into this. Yeah. Uh, so Michael is currently filming Boys in the Band, and yeah. Ellen, they've been yes. kind of quiet. I've seen certain photos I've of them. I've seen like their chairs, like their director's chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Robin Day has yeah. put a video of him like on top of a roof, of clearly like a lot, like very right. Hollywood. Yeah. But we haven't seen much. But so um, of course, the whole cast uh, from Broadway last year is doing mm -hmm. that movie. But now he will be starring in the revival of Anna Devere Smith's solo play Fires in the Mirror, which is a fantastic play. Uh, it's directed by Sahim Ali. It's based on real events, and it follows the death of an African-American boy and a young Orthodox Jewish scholar in the summer of 91 during all the Crown Heights in Crown Heights. racial I used to live in Crown Heights. tensions. Yeah. Uh, he is fantastic, Michael Benjamin Washington. He he used to be used to be in drag. Now he's very legit. Um, <laughs> he, I mean, yeah, like yeah, honestly, yeah, he's yeah, sure. he was in yeah. La Cage and he had a whole uh, other persona. So anyway, we love him. This is great. Um, yeah. This starts previous October 22nd, opens November 11th at the Pershing Square Signature Center. So congratulations. Uh, today's been a very exciting day on the site. You've been, first of all, a new, a brand new season Ooh. of Character, Character Study. Character Study, Casey which is like one of my favorite things. Uh, we're doing, so we're doing nine videos all about Disney characters. Right. Disney. She kicks it off. Of course, she's Elsa in Frozen. Uh -huh. It's so beautiful. Yes. She's incredible. Yep. What what else? Yeah. Uh, um, James, you, the final James Snyder final vlog. James what? Final it went by so fast. Oh, that's right, Bye. because we have a new one starting next week. We can't say who it is yet. Yeah, we but, cannot. It's but, top but secret. It's going to be good. It is. Uh, you went and saw Darren. You met Darren Brown, you met the, the magician. Oh, my gosh. Well, he's more than a magician, right? I spent right? the morning he's... with an incredible illusionist, and I'm still trying to figure out how some things happened. <laughs> I'm in don't, the B-roll. Don't think too hard about it. I'm in the B-roll, and I'm literally it's just like, like, like Margaritaville. Don't think too hard. <laughs> exactly. Just accept it. It's going to be great. It's really going to 
blow people's minds. It's I'm great. very excited. The um, great society. You, that was the event you did yesterday. The video yeah. is up of that. Yes. Ryan Cox from Succession. Yep. We have an interview with Matthew Needham, who's starring in Torch Song in London. And we've been putting up all kinds of fun old you videos on YouTube. You have been throwing back this Thursday. Just check out, subscribe to our YouTube page if we, if you haven't already. We put up some, oh, Rob McClure's character study video which from Chaplin, is which is the, one, one of my no, favorite videos yeah. I've ever Agreed. produced. Agreed. And I Agreed. looked this morning and it wasn't on YouTube. Agreed. It's so we found it and now it's on YouTube. We have to play it at your funeral. You yes, directed you, you, us. Yeah, you I literally did. said, play this at my funeral. It's my proudest moment. <laughs> Uh, that is a long ways off, but coming up right now <laughs> is Ephraim Sykes. Paul, yes. thank you so much. Caitlin, would you introduce our guest? Gladly, yes. We have Tony nominee Ephraim Sykes here with us today. You guys know who he is. He's currently playing David Ruffin and Ain't Too Proud on the Broadway. He's previously been seen on Broadway in Hamilton, Newsies, Motown, Memphis, and The Little Mermaid. This guy's been in all of my favorite things. Shout out to Newsies, never forget. Um, you also, yeah, he's also been in a ton of awesome stuff on screen, including Hairspray Live. Iconic. Make sure you follow him on social media at F Sykes, E P H Sykes, not E F. E P H, and leave all of your questions in the comments <laughs> below. Everybody, please welcome Ephraim and Ryan. Ephraim, we're Yay! so excited to have you Yay. here. You are. There are. Uh, there are some shows around the Broadway.com office that we uh, that we love and we talk about a lot, and we send friends and family to. Ain't too proud. The Life and Times of the Temptations is one of those shows. Perfect. You, sir, are absolutely. Unbelievable in this show. You give an incredible performance as David Ruffin. Thanks. You'd be blessed to see it. Tell us, what is it like? It's exhausting. It Ooh. must be. See these bags. <laughs> <You> see them. <laughs> <laughs> you make this grand entrance and it doesn't stop. How do you, how do you do it, sir? How? Oh. <laughs> Yo, I always say prayer and coconut water. That's yes. how I live by. Yes. And hot Epsom salt baths. I swear, with God on your side, so I wear his hat. <laughs> with God on your side and some coconut water by your side. Right. You can do That's anything. That's the trick. You're That's the Broadway trick. Because other than that, I really don't know how it it's happens. It's insane. Every day. It's I insane. Really don't know. But also, I, I know how. It, uh, you think about it in the way that I get to do this. You know yeah, what I mean? It's sure. like those, those dreams that was like too big to dream and it's like, okay, well, just keep showing up and trying your best and yeah. the audience gives so much and I get to portray one of my favorite people in the whole world and it means so much to the community, to the country, yeah. all that kind of stuff, man. So. I think that's how it happens. And you get to work alongside your, your mentor. I mean, True. I know Derek Baskin has been so crucial yes. to your career and your life. Seriously. What's it like to be able to just w spend all of this time with him, working with him it's, like this? I mean, again, it's another God moment. It's like I was looking at him last night on stage, and I was like, I see, I still can't believe that this is happening. Yeah. I remember my Broadway debut with this man. When I didn't, I literally didn't know what a button was until you know they say go to the button at the end. <laughs> right, my very right. first Broadway rehearsal, they're like, all right, we learn what number. It's like, let's take it to the button. I was like, I lost a button. <laughs> <laughs> Zipper. Um, so, like, I was so green. I had never even, that was like the second Broadway show I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah, Anyways, wow. this man has always taken me under my wing. I remember him going from that. We did uh, Memphis together. And just, I remember dreaming back then, like, what if we could do a show together one yeah, day? Like, just yeah. like really wild dreaming. And I look across last night, and my big brother, I'm talking to him and looking him in the eye. It is. I can't tell you that's how so much, exciting. You know, yeah, it's, that's, it's been crazy. It's amazing. This is your sixth Broadway show. Yeah, you, yeah. you, as a young man from from Florida, you came to the city thinking you wanted to be a dancer, right? Yeah. That dancing was going to be, and now you're in your sixth Broadway show, yes. Tony nominated. <laughs> what, how? Tell us how has Ephraim grown from making his Broadway debut in The Little Mermaid, being a, and to all the way to being in Ain't Too Proud. Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I just, I've grown in the way that like every experience is just added on into who I am. And every experience and every person that I've met, especially people like Derek, people like Norm Lewis, people like Titus Burgess, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like just, uh, and that's just three off the top of my head of hundreds of people that have like sown seeds into my life sure. in terms of like how yeah. to take on this beast. I never had any interest in Broadway at all. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it was a testament to just, uh, Continuing to say yes mm -hmm. to like making myself open to be uncomfortable, to try new things, right. and to also continue to admire people and like you know say, oh, I see that, I love that. How do you do that? Not being afraid to ask the questions, and then to this point now, it's just like, oh, now it's stuff about trusting yourself and knowing that you know everything that you've wanted or like aspired towards has already been yeah. created inside mm -hmm. of you. It's already there. So it's like, oh, 
Now I got to access that. So <laughs> right, right. it's been a tremendous uh, journey of just growth and being uncomfortable and still showing up and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And just seeing right. where it goes. Right. One, I want to ask you about, so, um, and, and your, your, your playwright, uh, Dominique Morisot, does such an incredible job of showing you uh, every side of, of the men that made up the Temptations. Yeah. And Derek, uh, um, uh, sorry, David Ruffin, he uh, was a complicated man. Oof. You know, he, uh, incredibly talented, of course, but there was drugs and abuse when you approached your research of this man what what were you trying to keep in mind as you got to learn about him and then knew you'd be you know portraying him how to fully flesh him out I think I had to start with the fact I mean I, I of course doing all the research and reading books and going through all the things that are online mm -hmm. that I can find also a lot a lot of the story when it comes to Motown especially this group is uh, what we call it's like folklore, it's like especially like right. black folklore. It's like my grandma's telling me stories about when she saw him, and you know people come to the wow. stage door. Like these wow. are how we know more of the facts, and also having Otis Williams, the last living temptation, he sat us down. It's like, hey, this is what happened. This right. is what you need to look out for in your own life. So, if you having those resources, and then being able to see how much me and him actually do have in common. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of weird when you play the uh, sort of anti-hero in certain ways or whatever like that and realize you've got more in common th with this person than you, you might have wanted right. to. Right, sure. Uh, so I, I realized he grew up in the church as, as all these guys did. His father was a preacher, as mine is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then so to be able to kind of marry that experience of what it was to be sort of under the microscope of the gospel church, especially the black gospel church, uh, and then try to make your way into secular music, um, and be abused by, and this didn't happen to me, but being able to understand having this concept of God and then being abused by the person that taught you who God was. Right, And that right. makes you distrust, not the person, but it makes you distrust God. Certainly. So that became yeah. my through line to his entire character in terms of how he celebrated, how mm -hmm. he over-sexualized, how he abused other people. Right. It was all, uh, uh, especially when it started getting into the drugs and he started to really sort of corrode uh, and self-destruct. I think it all, it all had to do with this, uh, he started to hate God and not yeah. trust him and mm -hmm. feel like he was truly in the universe by himself and nobody to look after him, especially as a young black man in the 60s. I you know what I mean? The kind of Certainly. controversy and uh, racism and things that he had to face, it was just like, it was too much to take. So a lot of us still to this day, when we can't handle the pressures, especially with that kind of fame, uh, you turn to drugs, you yeah. turn to like this ego, e egomaniac kind of like behavior. Uh, that ultimately is destructive. Right, yeah. right. No, and you. And one of the things that I, I admire most about is you. You are so open about uh, your activism and how True. and what in using this platform that you have now uh, for good. And I know that you and your your sister have a scholarship, yeah, right? For your, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, me and my little sister, we both you know grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida. We just it was it was so random that this little town in St. Pete. Uh, has an arts magnet chain, chain. so mm -hmm. like an elementary, middle, and high school that all kind of funnel into each other where they teach these kids, we're all like in the slap in the middle of the hood, um, give them give us instruments right. and places to dance and how to sing and like, I've you know, how to express ourselves. So we went through that whole journey and was, as well as being, you know, church kids, you know, came up in church singing and dancing and everything like that. And both of us have made our careers here in New York on Broadway. My sister's on tour right now in The Lion King. Right. Just like when we got to look back, I got to this season and I got my, uh, this, it was actually when the uh, Clarence Duran Award that I got from Equity. Right, yeah. yes, of course. And they uh, said that I was getting, you know, this award. It's just like a once in a lifetime thing. And I saw the list of people that are on it. And I was just like, this is just crazy. Okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> um, and then they said, yeah, and we're giving you a check. And I was like, what the hell are you giving me money for? You know what I mean? I get paid to do this anyway. Right, right. So it didn't seem right for me to have this money. And I was like, well, and my sister has done well in this. Like, we want to give back to the place that uh, has allowed us to even be here and dream this big. Absolutely. Uh, so if we can find two kids every year that are coming out of the school that are looking just to try to try their best in being it's in New amazing. York in the arts, wow. we're like, we're gonna do it. That's you amazing. Know, give them a little something. Yeah. No, when you uh, when you came to New York City for dance, what did you what did you think? Uh, what did you imagine your life would end up being here <laughs> in New York? I was going to uh, go through Alvin Ailey. I did Ailey too. That's I was going right, to join yeah. the first company. I was going to dance in the first company like my idols, uh, Matthew Russian and Desmond Richardson. I was going to turn into this choreographer like Ailey himself. Yeah. Maybe be like a rehearsal director there one day or start my own company. You know, and just kind of do like the whole bougie high art concert <laughs> dancing in New York. You know, you know, it gets cold. Everybody goes to City Center and they're meat and fuzz. And they, you know, they're all fancy and things like that. I was going to be one of those dudes, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, right. man. 
it just it did not. I remember I, I finished Ailey two. I uh, auditioned for the first company, and it came down to like me and one other guy, and they went with this other guy, and I was just like, okay. I went to another company, Complexions. I went to another company, uh, Cedar Lake, uh, just my favorite dance company. And I was like, I can still do concert dance, yeah. and it would always get down to like between me and like one other guy, like really close. And these doors just kept slamming in my face, and I was like. I called my dad, I was like, I literally don't know what to do because this is what I'm here for and mm -hmm. I can't do it. I don't know what else I'm supposed to be doing. And the very next maybe day or two, I got a call. One of, I don't know if you know a guy named Darrell Moultrie, who's sure, a, yeah, another yeah, Broadway absolutely. vet, yeah. uh, and James Brown III, who happened to be the dance captain at The Little Mermaid. They choreographed on me at Ailey too, and they were like, you need to come in for this uh, to replace this guy, Daniel yeah. Watts, who later became one of my best friends. Oh, fantastic. And yeah, that's how I wow. made my way, but like, I never had my sights set on it at all. So. Again, and, no, and, open. and I know that, uh, as Paul mentioned earlier, Hairspray Live had to have been this incredible moment for you, <laughs> yeah. a launching pad for you. I know, but I also know that Hollywood was buzzing after uh, Hairspray Live for you, and you, you know, chose to participate in Ain't Too Proud. What do you do? You hope to end up splitting your time more between theater and doing things on screen? Absolutely, absolutely. I've always, since I was a kid, my first kind of kind of some of my memories were watching movies. I've always had a love for film mm -hmm. and also TV. TV of course, as well. So I was just kind of getting my, you know, getting right, started yeah. in that world, uh, <laughs> especially after Hairspray. They were like, yay, let's do it. And it was like, ah, wait a minute, you need to go back here and do right. something else here on Broadway. And I was like, all right. Uh, but I definitely look forward to uh, trying and doing more on screen, but also not just on screen, I'm being inspired by a lot of the people around me that are able to create and produce and write right, and tell our own stories that, too. Yeah. That's huge in my mind right now, just as much as portraying things is like, what else can I create? There's so many stories that, you know, that I know of and that mm -hmm. my, you know, that my family, for instance, like, you know, I mean, like our history is like, it's crazy. And I'm living in a time now where the stories and who's telling the stories are diversifying as well. Absolutely. And they're rich and they're important and impactful and colorful. And I would love to be a part of that as well and continue to, like I'm trying to do with the scholarship, be able to give more opportunities as well as, uh, take opportunity. That's fantastic. Yeah. Right? yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Caitlin, what would some of our viewers oh. like to know you, from Ephraim? Well, a lot of people got a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. So Ask the first one. one is Marcus wants to know how do you physically and mentally prepare to play this role on a daily basis? Sheesh. Coconut water. <laughs> Coconut, Coconut water, water and prayer <laughs> and hot baths. <laughs> and also, like I said, I came up in, um, in Alvin Naley who taught me that school trained me like to work hard. You know what I mean? I know how to warm my body up. So I do that every day before the show. I know what my joints need. I know how much rest I need. Right. I know when I haven't got enough rest, how to uh, sort of not put my pedal, put the pedal to the metal too much to like injure yourself. Yeah. It's, you know, it's technique. Right. It's what you go to school for. And beyond that, it's just, again, it, rest is essential. Rest and hydration is essential. And mm -hmm. just, you know, you got to sort of you got to predict what's going to happen, right? You got to right, stay yeah. stay ready. So if you if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, just being ready. You got to know like what your weaknesses are and right. uh, continue to work on them on your off time. And I you don't know, be willing to give your all when you get there. I don't know. <laughs> what's your pre before you start the show when you're like backstage? What kind of mindset do you do? You try to be amped? Or are you someone that likes to end start with a calm? It so depends your... on my day, and it's always music based. My life has always been based sure, on based yeah, around music. Yeah. So every time I get to the theater, the first thing that's cut cuts on is my little speaker, my Beats pill. And it's normally somewhere between like a funk, James Brown, Earth, Wind & Fire type of thing, or like some new school, like Chance the Rapper, yeah, Anderson okay. Pop, because uh, for me, again, David is sort of my alter ego. He has this swag, he has this confidence that is like through the roof. And me, my, my sort of go-to is to like kind of hide and be the guy in the back. Sure, right. um, so I would put on some music that makes me feel good. I like do my warm up and I'm like, so I walk out on the stage with a little bit of swag and some energy on me because that's more of who David was. Right, so right. I, uh, it's that, but also every day at five, we all circle up or not we all, most of us, a couple of us in the cast, we all circle up on stage and we pray very hard before each show because mm. this is a show that is very spiritual as well. Certainly it's is. Almost, yeah. people, come, people say they come to the show and it feels like a church service almost. Yeah. Yeah. Because literally we talk to God from from moment one and say, you know, that's how it's established, almost mm -hmm. like our judge, you know what I mean? And uh, the fact that he's allowing this to happen at all. And we just kind of go into it with that kind of mindset of like, we're not playing characters. We're, pl we're getting to play real mm -hmm. people who right. lived and died, who struggled and failed and all these kind of things. So we like to invite our ancestors into the space. And we believe yeah. that that kind of source and spirituality is what like really makes some transcendent things happen on that yeah. stage. And we feel it and we just kind of can concentrate on that. 
right. Uh, yeah. And then let the audience experience whatever, you know, we cooked up that night. That's so cool. Amazing. Yeah, okay, we can do, we have time for another question. Last one. Carrie wants to know, what is the Temptation song that just always gets stuck in your head? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's also seasonal. So it depends on what, <laughs> what parts place I'm in my life. I have to say, uh, Papa was a Rolling Stone. There's something Such haunting about that. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. it sounds like a, a, it's a locomotive kind of a, of a feel, but it's like very dirty gospel country roots in its yeah. feel, but also the message of it, which speaks to uh, just I think the the loss and the torture of black men in this country. I think it's just it's beautiful and it's haunting, and I don't know. I can yeah. never shake it. No, I think that's a fair. When you think back, I mean, you've been to the Met Gala, you've been to Jeez. the Tony, you've performed at the Tony Awards, <laughs> you've got a nomination. You, when you look back on all of this, what will this year of your life being here with it? What will it represent to you? How will you, will you remember this moment? I think it's all been again just a lesson in trust, mm. and this one has been for me the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, and to the point where I literally didn't know if I could or how I mm. could, and somehow every time, even when I'm on, even when I can barely speak during the day, I can show up to the theater and something will come out, and I can be like I say, God, let them use you. You'll be, you, you, you can get used. So mm -hmm. I just had to start to learn how to trust and truly go along for the ride and trust my growth, not rush my process, mm -hmm. not compare. Um, so yeah, man, and it's, it, that kind of trust also, you get to sort of, it, it allows you to fly and you end up in right. some places like the Met Gala or like performing <laughs> on the Tonys or getting right. nominated for a Tony. You just, you, you wind up in places that you could have never seen for yourself, I feel like. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, like I said, you are phenomenal in the show, Thank sir, you. as well as the entire cast is amazing. Treat yourself to Ain't Too Proud at Broadway's Imperial Theater. Thank you again. Remind them where they can follow you, keep up with your adventures. Yeah, follow along, Instagram, and all the things, <laughs> Snapchats, and the young folks is doing <laughs> at F Sykes, E P H S Y K E S. I'll be yeah. posting little videos of me and my little fat dog. So it's entertaining sometimes. Fantastic. <laughs> Such a pleasure, sir. Thank it's you my so pleasure. much. Keep working hard. Will do. Caitlin, would you take us out, please? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in on Monday when we talk to current waitress star Allison Luff.